Here we are again with more Jimmy, and what a ride it has been thus far. Last session encompassed so much. Tetsuya Kawaii, Accelerated Dynamics, The Subway, Central Hub, Planets, Jimmy Through Lars, and Punch Tanaka's Celebration of Life. We've got a spaceship to travel the world with the goal of returning to the corrupted Central Hub and presumably defeating the pulsating mass. <laughs> but there's so much content separating us from what I think will be the end game. I'll cruise over viewer feedback before we get started. Uh, as an aside, before I do that, I am sick. I've got a clogged nostril. Everything hurts. <laughs> I'm going to try to power through the primary impact that this will be for this session, however long it is, is uh, that I'm not going to be as observant or perceptive sharp as I normally am. And I have been fairly sharp throughout this series. Uh, you can credit part of that due to the game for engaging me. I've got meticulous notes on the side. I might be leaning on those more. Anyway, uh, several viewers expressed a disconnect with the story because of the optional dungeons. Specifically, how could an eight-year-old have such detailed thoughts about this many subjects? I don't have that disconnect. I have no trouble with Jimmy being insightful and perceptive. Age doesn't inherently limit those qualities. Uh, age does limit... You just have less life experience to compare and contrast. Um, one encounter with something or one conversation with someone can radically, radically shape your viewpoint regardless of how old you are. But what we see in optional dungeons like Accelerated Dynamics are things that Jimmy hopes or fears are true. Like, uh, what office life is like. How did he get that? Was there a drama show on television from a movie? Did he hear, like, friends of the family talking about it? Did he read it in, like, a, a book? I don't know. Fucking beats me. Can't even begin to explain how Jimmy has all this shit in his head. Now, if you're still having that disconnect, I've got another angle for you to consider. We occasionally have gameplay sacrifices to make a more compelling story. These immersion-threatening moments for you are story sacrifices to make more compelling gameplay. How about that? The most feedback, however, came from the end of Central Hub. It is variegated. Uh, some of you wanted the game to flatten Jimmy with an unwinnable boss battle. I disagree, it would have been a waste of time. Some of you, uh, lethal feline comes to mind in particular, noting the, the train's horn symbolizing the railroad that we were on. <laughs> you know, uh, there was disappointment uh, expressed by uh, some folks about... Uh, how the situation was conveyed. Some of you came to the game's defense regarding Buck's new power level, referencing Helga no longer being able to see her son in his eyes. But was Buck enraged over his defeat, or was he actually soft on Jimmy during that rooftop fight? Is he tapping into more of the pulsating mass's power? Or is the pulsating mass so desperate that it is pulling out all the stops? Does seeing Andrew and Lars piss off Buck enough to make him go Super Saiyan? Uh... Hell if I know. <laughs> uh, but the moment at the time fell flat for me. The time away from the session has uh, made me consider how Buck didn't stop the family from escaping. He almost patiently waited through the whole exchange. All Buck did was stop the secret knowledge from being used. That's it. And probably kill Punch Tanaka. So there's that to consider. As far as I'm concerned, though, Buck is still fine. <laughs> I say that loosely, fine. Uh, because the game has repeatedly noted how much stronger Buck is than Jimmy. I think it is damn telling that a corrupted Buck is the face of fear here. That he ends up being, like, the strongest like, presentation of the pulsating mass yet. Because Jimmy absolutely fears his brother. All right, I think that is enough. Oh, and during the time, we can talk about that in the game. Uh, I considered a bit of the gameplay itself from combining a rotting Jago Lantern level 50 with plutonium because the rotting Jago Lantern can't be healed. Let me, like, 
with spectral body. Immune to physical can't be healed. So combining that with uh, the plutonium, which gives you immune efficiency, seems valuable to me. Um, something worth noting, though, is how the party composition currently is. We have Mom, who, based on her skill set, without any, like, manual adjustments, and based on the equipment available, is a support character who heals. Uh, does not help accelerate me through encounters, just gives me some staying power. We have Lars, who is the ultimate in staying power. Uh, his skill set revolves around staying alive and attracting all aggro that doesn't impact the entire group. Now, he can have some offensive power, too, when combined with counter stance, provided he has a weapon to make a meaningful dent in someone's health. You have Andrew, who, while with the advanced calculus book and with manuals could have some potential for being a physical attacker, is most inclined to do magic attacks. Just, he's a nuker. Which means that we're missing a physical powerhouse, like a, like a, a physical attack powerhouse. Elga can fit in that role, Lars can do something with that role, but Jimmy is the one with the most options with that. So something like a Grumble Bear Rampage combined with Called Shot from Punch Tanaka, combined with Mana Burn from the Rotting Jago Lantern, combined with Weak Point from Andrew. Sounds like a lot of physical damage to me. On the flip side, we have no physical damage weapon as potent as crowns are. So, Black Fountain, Mana Burn, Cult Shot, Weak Point, uh, seems like it would be the most effective based on the equipment currently available. Alright. That was fun. So, plenty of the world to explore, the ship moves quick. We've got no map, though. So, we just have to remember things to... <laughs> a little nauseating for me seeing that speed. Oof. Let's begin by visiting the ultimate construction. How do you feel about this place, Jimmy? <laughs> what do I want to focus on leveling up? Despite the plutonium idea, I don't think I want to go with Rotting Jack O' Lantern right now. I want to secure that Black Fountain. Reluctantly? Ah, let's be punched. Let's get called shot. You know, because his skill set's totally fitting for a uh, magic attack. Mm-hmm. Yup. It's 100% true. <laughs> Mr. Beaver, it has been a while. Stanley, listen to Mr. Beaver over the speaker. Uncertain whether he should follow the rules established here in the ultimate construction. The Jimmy Parable. Not the first time I've referenced that game in the series. You know, you caught me at a good time, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna follow along. So hi, how's it going? Use this opportunity to get a drink. I... Oh good, good, good. Was not horrifically long. <laughs> That's what came up. 
Okay. Alright. Red switch it is. Hopefully I can follow rules in my condition. Mr. Beaver, make my content for me while I'm sick. Again, Jimmy, you need to imagine a fucking flashlight into existence. seen you before. You're still such a cutie. You are. You are adorable. No, don't do that. I don't know whether I have that love seat. Get it. I guess. Gotta get used to Lars being last in the order. Can't stop smiling. Aww. You're welcome, Mr. Beaver. Filling up on junk food. Okay. So the stairs are here. I imagine that path that was at the T intersection, the road not taken, would have led around to the toy box. <sighs> we'll see uh, whether I feel like breaking any of these rules up ahead, and if so, then I'll go back and grab that by crossing the line. Alright. Person-sized board game. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Yes. One, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna need to count this stuff out loud, given my impaired condition. And also, I can't trust math anymore after everything we've seen thus far in this game. Especially at the World's Library. I remember. Power of positive thinking. And a cherry bomb. Three, four. Hello, Cloud Prince. We just run from these fights. Who knows where else this son of a bitch. Suppose I could have just like banked up to see whether we could have escaped at all. Well, it happened. Tensing your muscles, whatever that meant, you can go to hell. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, 
to break. One, two, three, four. Toy box with a super ball. One space. One space. We got to skip that fight. One, two, three. One space. One space. One, two, three, four, five, six. One space. Mr. Beaver. Please. Can this board game be over? Okay. Mulvaney here. Combination luck. Oh no, Lars is sick. That combination lock didn't appear to adjust the amount of money we could steal from Mulvaney, so I don't know what the hell it does. This is the worst timeline. <laughs> Not putting Lars to sleep so easily. He has a caffeinated inhaler. Yay. I won. Great. I'm a winner. I could have been punched to knockout while stealing stuff instead of the goon. That's the kind of insight and forethought I don't have right now. <laughs> ah, look at our lack of moxie. It's great. Every left turn possible. Hopefully from Jimmy's perspective. Rules don't have to make sense, they just need to be followed. So this reminds me of something else that got brought up where a viewer whose name currently escapes me, and I apologize, uh, expressed disappointment over the pulsating mass not being involved with Mr. Grouse. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, well, that's not an issue for me. Because Jimmy, like, has other things in mind besides the pulsating mass. It doesn't have to be involved with every damn thing. You know, one day Jimmy looked inside is the tagline for this game, and it doesn't just have to be Pulsating Mass, Pulsating Mass. It's part of the story Jimmy's telling of Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass. But there's other thoughts that Jimmy has, too. Like, you know, thoughts about... Cats. There's plenty of places that we've been to that aren't directly affected by the Pulsating Mass. Grimclaw is, but that Legato stuff sure doesn't sound like it is. Yeah, so I think it's cool that uh, there's things in the game that don't correlate with words. <laughs> That's the best I got. <laughs> okay, just... just attack. I was interested in seeing what other, like, enemy encounters there were in here. I'm loath to restore my moxie points. As, you know... No, I was just thinking about the idea of a fountain, but I'll probably be told not to fucking use it. Uh-oh. Well... My 
my sloppy play brought that on myself. I have I have no one to blame other than me. That is upsetting. Wake up, please. We don't have any normal Chaco Colas. Right. I remember this now. But I would choose to remember this now instead of, you know. <laughs> right. Maybe. Beaver's ultimate pit fighting championship. Stealing is wrong. Win this one without stealing. Nice. All right, I'm 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 done with this shit. No more Mr. Nice Graham. Wait five turns before killing it. Oh, Christ. Why does it have to be another turn counter? This is my life. Great. Great. <laughs> it's everything I ever wanted. What happens if two people undulate? Who knows? Let's be a bird. Exercise our God-given right to go nuts. Let's see whether... More quicker than you. You guard. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Let's see whether hyperactive can make it so that we go before the cloud prince there. Let's. Psych you. Thanks for making me sick, jerk. And... Rejuvenate everyone. That was turn two. Okay. Hyperactive. You. Mm. Doing that whole tensing thing again. will not fall asleep so easily. Fool. This will be the last turn. Let's renew that undulate. Pretty sure that was five turns. But for giggles, let's wait one more time. Because of how much I love spending time with all of you. <laughs>
All right. We're done. Time for you to exercise your god-given right to go nuts. I should have used Mana Burn before Hyperactive. That was a misplay. Whatever. We have items to heal this stuff. Oh, that was... I expected worse from the Cloud Prince there than that. That's why I hyperactive. Alright, run from this next fight. <laughs> Sleeping Rad Ghost. Oh, with the Super Rad Ghost there. That was bushels of XP. Well, yes, a genuinely enjoyable experience. Thanks for giving me Mr. Beaver's Ultimate Pit Fighting Championship. We shall now move on. Alright, let's stay on the yellow line. Got it. Presence, rocket. Fountain, information guy, secret fun button. What are you doing? Toy box. Yeah. See, nothing pertaining to the pulsating mass here at all. Mr. Beaver just has an obsession. What happens if you don't follow the rules? I don't know. I can save that for another playthrough of Jimmy and the Pulsating Mass. Remember what happens if you tell me. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Beaver. What if it isn't ultimate enough? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> There's a ladder for that. I think there's other concerns on the moon, but I'm sure you could workshop all of that. A building so big you could see it from this planet. Got a portrait of his mom up there on the wall. <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Beaver, we can go over a half hour. <laughs> Second floor? Second floor? Next time. The second floor. Cool! Mr. Beaver, you're awesome. <laughs> 